In at number 10, we have got the Carnotaurus, and this creature really did have to be here on the list for me. And there are several reasons why, and the first reason probably comes down to a lot of sheer nostalgia for this creature from all of the old version of Ark. But still, I really, really enjoy this creature for just its wealth of features as well. Namely, it does have the bleed ability, which barely any carnivores actually have, which doesn't really make sense considering they're carnivores and they rip into creatures. But, you know, hey-ho, that's just the way it works. And also, they're pretty small and compact and quite speedy and pretty easy to tame as well, which, again, really does play to their advantage hugely as, you know, you can easily get around the map and beat other creatures or players in combat situations because you actually have the mobility to you know move around all over the place and again that size really does help they're kind of a little bit of a stealth creature although their stomp sounds are aggressively loud especially considering their size but you know that's fine you're not really gonna completely use them for that or really use them at all for that and the matter but they're just a really easy convenient nice carnival you can get in the early stages of the art game which just really does pack a punch next up we have the theory and this creature had to be here for its sheer greatness in resource gathering and also the fact that it started it was unlocked at level 69 nice with this thing in terms of the resources which it can gather is actually fiber wood thatch and any kind of berries hide and wood and fiber is a particular one which i want to talk about because fiber is such an essential resource for any arc player like come on you're gonna always need some more fiber you can get tons and tons of the stuff with this creature which again that hugely does benefit through you through you do i don't even know anymore it hugely benefits you sorry that's what i meant to say throughout the whole arc experience as fiber can just be gathered so easily with this creature you never really have to worry about it again until you obviously you have to go out and get some fiber but the main kind of use for these things on the island which is is not really as widely used on other maps is for the dragon boss fight but if the map which you're on has the dragon as one of its bosses because I know some other maps kind of tie in some bosses together then get some theories for that fight as the dragon is particularly harsh to non-herbivores, and seeing this as a herbivore, you know, it works quite well. Just pay attention to the healing of these creatures, as sometimes it can be pretty horrible to do. Sorry, I've got a bit of hiccups at the moment. Um, compared to just having normal meat, as you need sweet vegetable cake for them to heal really quickly, and that's just very expensive. And now we have the Carcodontosaurus, and this creature is hugely powerful, which is obviously why it's on this list, and the Giga kind of would have been on this list until this creature came out, as it does whatever the Giga does, or all that the Giga does, not whatever the Giga does, it sounds like I don't really know what the Giga is, and just does it better. It deals more damage than the Giga because, you know, once that blood rage is full, it will deal more damage than the Giga, it has more health because it doesn't have the rage meter, its stamina is better, and it can actually move a reasonable spa pace, space space pace i don't know anymore i'm really struggling for words today which is lovely but either way yeah their pace is pretty quick especially for a creature of this size and obviously if you want to be stupid you can crank all your levels into stamina if you want but uh i wouldn't really recommend doing that but i guess these things can really run for ages if you do that maybe just get a stamina mutation if you're actually looking into all of that and yeah these creatures are just Although not the easiest to tame, as there is a little bit of faff involved with the tame methods, they are pretty easy to tame, and once you've got them, they're really extremely powerful creatures, which essentially are just the Giga, but in every way that the Giga's bad, it's better. And they also deal the bleed ability, which is another huge bonus. In at number 7, we have the Baryonyx, and I don't really know where I would be in Ark without this creature here. Like, when you look at this creature, you really see true like usefulness in it i guess you could say because you know it's baryonyx it's a really great caving creature you can really see this creature for what it is and it's just such a useful one for all kinds of caving on the island again i wouldn't really know where i would be without this creature obviously it can't fit into the cave which holds the artifact of the sky lord so if you're going for that one don't bring a baryonyx to it but no creature can really fit into that you need to crouch at some points of the cave anyway but i guess with cries you could possibly get one in there but they're not particularly useful in that given scenario, so I wouldn't really recommend that all too much because, you know, 
it's not really going to be that useful and you could risk just getting the baryonyx falling into one of those holes that lead to nowhere and losing it forever. And it's also really great now in the water caves as well because of that spin ability which in stun creatures up to the size of a megalodon. They're just so versatile in all of their caving uses and also just combat uses as well. They're great combat creatures, they've got really good melee damage of course and their health is pretty good as well. Again, size is perfect for caves because they're really thin and they're not too tall and also they have pretty nice agility on top of that too. Next up, we have the Maywing, and this is just pretty much the epitome of travel mounts in Ark. It thing, it thing, this thing, again, really, really terrible with the words today. But yeah, this thing really does pack a punch in the travel department, if you can even say something packs a punch in something which doesn't really deal a heck of a lot of damage. Its gliding ability just makes it so agile and quick moving across pretty much any map, as they don't need a whole lot of verticality like something such as the Rock Drake to actually move around the map, and I find they're pretty easy to take around some flatter areas of arc maps, which obviously does play to their benefit, and obviously you can skim across the top of water as well, so you know if there's any water about, you can just skim over the top of that really quickly with ultimate ease, but obviously they're not just absolute traveling beasts. These creatures also are really great for breeding as they act as a portable feeding shelf, and they can gather berries on top of that too. The only real downside to these things is, um, the animation for the feeding trough just looks just looks a little bit creepy to me. In at number five, we have the Bloodstalker, and this creature is my favourite underwater tone right now, and I really think it is perfectly balanced for all things arc, especially in the water. Of course, these things are quick, agile swimmers that can also skim over the top of water as well, which again just plays their benefit. And I have no idea why I didn't actually swim in the water when doing the b-roll for this i only just skim over the top of it like you'll see there but i didn't actually go into it even though i use these things for mainly underwater things and they essentially act like the awesome spyglass mod allowing you to see the aggros of creatures and also where loads of creatures are which you know that's a really nice ability to have especially in the water where sometimes it might be dark and you can't really see creatures you can easily spot anything so easily with that ability and it doesn't just have to be ocean creatures it can be on the land as well and also on top of that these creatures really do have really great traveling abilities just on land as well they're really great traveling mounts and you could say they're kind of slightly more useful than the maywing in a lot of scenarios especially for underwater travel actually but the skimming on top of the water is pretty much the same thing but just for general normal travel you could say as you don't really need any verticality but there is still an essence of verticality involved which kind of backpedals on my point there but you can make do without it's just to kind of you just need things to grab onto really which is obviously what changes this from a, just a normal flyer but i still think it is a really really perfect creature for me next up we have the reaper and this creature is just so good in like every way and although yes maybe the reaper queen has a slightly better second attack than the reaper king but this is obviously a reaper queen in the b-roll by the way actually it's not actually it's not a reaper king if you couldn't tell but um they look pretty similar but uh i forced him to a reaper queen so it's technically this is not really what you're getting because uh you know the the tail of it is different but still the general gist of it is exactly the same it's it's kind of the same creature really yeah that was the only thing that could make it in essence any better but i'm still perfectly fine with it. it is and obviously with the r reapers on gen 2 they really are hugely powerful tamers with pretty interesting tame methods as well which again makes them a really interesting one to me and i enjoy that about them quite heavily actually that you can really get a lot of use out of these creatures and also just a lot of experience out of taming one and it really feels like You've truly achieved something when you tame a Reaper, which can't really be said for some other art creatures, especially if you tame it on Arboration, as uh, on Gen 2, it's pretty cheesy to do, and it doesn't require all too much effort, but if you do have Gen 2 and you think you're taming a Reaper and you've never tamed one before, maybe it's the map to start on. In at number three, we have the Shadow Mane, and this creature has to be here. The Shadow Mane is just so densely packed with all kinds of abilities, it just has to make the list. It's just... This is the Shadow Main in essence and in heart. It is such a good creature for all things combat. It's a really good travel mount as well, as it is really fast and agile, which again really does play to it very strongly. And on top of that, it works really well underwater as well. But you know, its name kind of is Lionfish Lion when you look through all the models and 
you know, all of that. It is Lionfish Lion. That is the name of this creature. So, you know, you, you could probably expect this creature to be really great. And it does have the hydration buff, which only it and the Spino share. And it can go invisible. It has the pack buff. It's also a really great boss creature, if I haven't mentioned that already. I don't think I have. And as you can see there, really great in the water. It's only real downside is its tail method because that thing is an absolute pain. And I wouldn't wish it on even my worst enemies. In at number two, we have got the Desmodus. And this creature just reeks pure quality. When you think of it, it just has such a high wealth of abilities. And with that sanguine elixir, you really do have a creature which has pure greatness within it. And you know, that really does play to this creature being like the perfect art creature. That sanguine elixir is an absolute cheat for tames. It's a blood bag farm, allowing you to obviously farm blood bags. It can grapple onto walls like the Tapajara. It can glide like the snow owl, and it can even go invisible in the nighttime as well. So you couldn't show because I was in the Wasteland's Biome Extinction. Chose the absolute worst biome, and for some reason, the animation kind of glitched later for the gliding ability, which is nice, I guess, but yeah, the Desmodus just reached pure quality, and its tame method is exactly the same as the Bloodstalker, and once you have a Desmodus, taming your Bloodstalker is much easier, as those blood bags are really, really easy to come by, as you know, you can just farm them with this creature, and it also does a pretty hefty amount of damage, and in PvP scenarios, you can pick players off mounts, so really is a great tame. And in number one, we have the Deinonychus, and in my opinion, this had to make the number one spot. This creature is just like perfect in every way. Its tame method is great, and this thing is heavily packed with abilities. I guess maybe the only thing it could do better is be better in the water, but you know, the fact that this thing can deal bleed damage to bosses really does make it just such a great creature, and its size is really great as well. It could be a great caving mount as it can fit into pretty much every cave. Its tone method is really easy, you just have to steal its eggs from a nest and then raise those. Nothing crazy, especially compared to the Shadow Moon tone method, which is significantly harder. And although, yeah, maybe they could do a little bit of swimming, it's not it's not really their forte, but I wouldn't use them for that in any sense whatsoever. I would use them for bosses because they can obviously deal bleed damage to bosses and latch onto them and all of that. But they also are really great for traveling as they don't take full damage and they can absolutely tread across land so quickly as obviously I can kind of just parkour around the map. And also they do have the pack buff as well, which makes them even better for combat, just going back to bosses. The fact that these creatures have pack buffs really do make them so much better for all things to do with bosses. Again, just really makes them even better creatures and you'll see that kind of parkour being used here as you can say they kind of just jump across the rocks and you know it really does make scaling those taller cliffs not so much of a headache as you just have to go around them you can just simply scale them in true fashion so if you have never already considering this one in Valguero which is a free DLC map tame yourself a Deinonychus, you will not regret it. But anyway, that is the end of today's video, and I really hope that you enjoyed this one, and as always, comment down below, what is the most perfect art creature to you, and did you agree with this list? If not, comment down your top 10, which you would have put in instead, and I'll see you all later.